Oh, like too short shit. Oh, like, it had like that reverb on the vocals and shit to make it like real. Nigga! Yeah. You ever listen to um, America's Nightmare? Oh. America's Nightmare. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. You know how, like, uh, tell me what the male light or fucking, uh, what's the other one? Just got me strapped. It just got me strapped. Yeah, it just got me strapped. Like that sound, like it just sounded like somebody about to creep on type shit. But it's like one of them, it's like, a, it's one of them sounds that's like forever though. It just reminds you of men's to society. It reminds you of the 90s. Yeah. Every time you hear it, like you, you know exactly what the song is. Smile in my eyes. That's one of my favorite albums of all time. I probably have to take this motherfucker out again. Bro, that whole album, top to bottom, tell me what that male like, nigga, that made me like one of this be like. I want to create music like that. That's why I touched with the underground so much, like with the banging and shit, and the fucking niggas, and you know, banging Detroit and everywhere else. Just making shit like that be like the dopest shit ever. That should be forever, bro. Yeah, yeah, like. It's it's something it's something about that sound, bro. It's like it never goes away, bro. I'm, it's it's really one of those special ass sounds. A lot of people depreciate it because they don't understand it, or you know what I'm saying. People don't popularize it, you know, like how these industries do. Yeah. If that was the case, DJ Quick would be fucking on Michael Jackson level. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But he got blackballed so hard and shit because he was he niggas are real. He knows how to play every instrument, damn near. Right. Every album was instrumentation was done by Quick. Like every fucking album, but people would depreciate him and shit because they wasn't really trying to focus on that. He didn't get that look. He didn't get that push from his label, which was Profile Records. Bro, I remember I had watched the interview about folks. He was talking about how, um, how like everybody always asked him about like working with Pac and shit like that. Mm -hmm. He was like, damn, nigga, like I work with Prince too. Yeah, you know, nigga, ask me no questions. Yeah. Ask me worry about with Jay Z and shit. You know yeah. what I'm saying? That really got up under his skin too when people started doing that shit to him and putting him in a box. Yeah. And you know, then I started understanding like more like I'm on the same level. Like niggas always ask me about Wiz. I'm like, nigga, that was like ten years ago. Yeah. Like, he asked me about the shot done with Kendrick and for Travis Scott and all these other niggas and shit. Like how's it working with that nigga? Travis is fun. You feel like he's all over the place. Yeah, that's my boy. Like I, mm -hmm. you know, before like, you know, where he got to where he's now, like he always been like, you know, ahead of the curve with creativity and being an innovator. Um, I've known Travis since like fucking 2012, 2011. Mm. So yeah, I know him for almost like 10 years. And um, we was at Paramount. He was in the small room. We was in the small room too, right next to him. And uh, we didn't even know he was in there. And nigga was just like, Carl, go away, woo woo. And we just shook up and shit and went in the room. I was supposed to be working with Wiz and shit, but instead I was in there working with Trav. <laughs> That was our first time, and we ended up doing some shit for the Al Ferrell album, but it didn't make the cut, so... Um, then fast forward to, like, fucking... Right at the Birds in the Trap. Yeah. Like, 2014, 2015, around that time he started working on it. Then we was in L.A., and I remember just being at Conway with this nigga for, like, a week straight, just creating. And I went back home, and I made Goosebumps, and through the late night at home. Oh my mama, nigga! Every record that is big, like in, you know, part of, you know, our careers and shit, all been done from here, or Arizona and fucking Pittsburgh or whatever, you know. But everything I accomplished right here, the crib, it's kind of weird because you be like, you figure you make your best shit with the nigga right there, yeah. but all it takes for you to go back home and create some shit on your own space for him to fuck with. Yeah. I thought that was fucking crazy. But hey, that's how this shit works. Yeah. That's how it should work. So you just gotta trust the process of it all. Like I said, I ain't never seen a palm tree grow overnight ever. Right. So I just pay attention to that. Like, it ain't even supposed to be rushed if it's perfect. Like, you know, don't even do it. Let it become what it become. Right. Okay, so, I. So with the, but with the, all right, so going back. 
to like with the weird shit though. Mm -hmm. Like that was something that y'all like sat down and put together. Did he just find y'all shit? Y'all decided to go back and forth. It was really like with, with Christian Orange. Yeah, Christian Orange was like really a sound that he was already going towards to. Like we both had the same taste in you know '80s music. Like that whole um, I don't want to call it like like almost like vaporwave or whatever. Or, mm -hmm. They wanted to say it was disco. It wasn't disco to me. It was just more like the new retro wave music and shit. Like the sound was like Sonic, you know. So we all like was a, a part of that. You know, we grew up in the same era of music. So once he caught wind of that through, you know, the homie Chevy, it became like Kush Norgix. Like I didn't even know I even was gonna be on that motherfucker. To be honest, first time I met him, man, man, uh. I forgot what hotel it was downtown. Probably like uh, I want to say Hilton, one of the motherfuckers. But uh, he told me to play on some beats and shit. Playing beats on the phone because I used to call my beats on the iPhone. And my laptop had just crashed. I swear to God, I was so pissed. And I'm like, oh man, I had heat on there and everything. The last beat I did on that motherfucker before it crashed was the um. In the cut, in the cut, Roman dudes up. In the cut, yeah. That was the last beat I did. But I put it on my phone through my little iTunes shit. So it was already on there. So I was saved by that. Because it was, well, it was through my email. So, because I opened my beast through the email. At that time, I didn't have that shit. It was through the email. You could save it through the email and shit, or whatever. Sent him the beat through the email, or whatever. He picked like 20 beats that night. And I'm like, damn, I ain't no way he's gonna use all these shits. And lo and behold, he used damn near every one of the beats. Half of them songs ain't never came out. I don't know what he did with them. Bro, it was so much shit me and him had. Me and him and Sledger. You know, so me and Sledger, once upon a time, had a whole tape with this nigga with this. But he didn't press the button on it. I wish he would have. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. He still can. We was working on some new shit recently, but I got caught up, mixed up in some other projects. I'm like, bro, I got to tend to this. Feel me? This kind, of, you know what I'm saying? A little all of a sudden shit, but you know when the time comes, man, I would love to do it. Man, bro, that'd be like that'd be like world breaking. For real, man. You know, just bringing back smooth shit, man. Because like I said, music is just too just. I don't know. Yeah. I don't feel the energy where I just be like I'm excited about everything that's coming out. Right. Not saying everything is trash. It just ain't my cup of tea. Yeah. Like, I just feel like two elements are really missing from music right now. Like, motherfuckers ain't really making like songs for real. They ain't making no songs. And They're they not making shit from the heart. And that shit ain't fun no more. They ain't fun. Nigga, everybody gotta be serious. Everybody gotta be dripping. Nobody got money to be dripping like that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? No that's how I know. Like, yeah, that's how I know this chrome heart shit. This way, niggas are rocking fake chrome hearts. Yeah. And niggas trying to keep up. Niggas trying to keep up. Like, let's make some bootleg shit. Because y'all making niggas make. Man, work hard to get the real shit, you feel know I me? Mean? Like, we gotta make music and influence niggas to work. You know, that's why me and Payroll do the shit we do. That's why me and Larry do the shit we do. You know, that's why I go around and go back with Keem and, or I go over here and work with Chad or work with Drake or whatever. You know, it's cause I learned, I mastered my skills being at home right. and being in different cities too. You know what I'm saying? I ain't grow up just in Minnesota. I grew up in three different cities. Cause my parents travel, so it's like, man, I got a bit of this, a bit of that, and a bit of that. I got a bit of West Coast, cause I lived in Denver for some time, for like three years. Went back home, and came back to Colorado. And then, yeah, went back home, cause my dad lives there. And then, got in trouble, got out here. Well, before all that, we lived in Georgia, me and Savannah. I know, crazy. And then, fucking Chicago and South Bend. Cause it's right there, it's like, nigga. You cross the street, you in fucking Chicago. And those once upon a time, these, you know, my mom, she had no money and her car broke down, nigga. We was there for like fucking Easter weekend, and we ended up being there till like mid-summer. <laughs> and I was so pissed, bro. Well, I didn't understand that time. I was like, man, fuck you. But I didn't want to experience that ever again. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I was like, man, I started, like I said, growing into music and producing. Like production really became a big, Part of my life. I'm like, I, ain't, I don't know how to make beat shit. You know what I'm saying? At that time, and boom, just start growing into it. So that's like what initially was just like made you just throw yourself completely into that shit. Man, what? That struggle was scary, bro. Yeah. Ain't nothing like this, you know what I'm saying? I mean, if anybody ever been a homeless show, that shit is 
Man, it's petrifying. This shit could be like world ended for a nigga, you know, mind state thing. Like, damn, this is like where it comes to, especially mm-hmm. a young nigga. You know, I'm at an age where I could understand shit a little bit. Like, shit ain't going right. You know, so it's like I don't want to have my family experience nothing like that ever in life. So sure. that's why I, I place the plays like how I place them and just hopefully they grow into something. But yeah, that struggle just stays on you. It don't go nowhere. As much as you want to shake that shit off. That shit in the back of your mind. Yeah, always. <laughs> what? As soon as your life flip, you like, <laughs> I ain't pay light bill. You know what I'm saying? Like, nigga, I swear to God, niggas got PTSD from shit like that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? When we got hit by a snowstorm, man, it was like a fucking, like. I know it gets crazy up there, man. Man, but we had a snowstorm out here. Uh huh. Yeah, just in February. Oh, you talking about, yeah, when, yeah, like, yeah, it, right. it just That's haunted me, happens. like, out of nowhere, bro, because it was just like the lights, everything was off. It was just like the most depressing shit ever. It just felt like I was going through that shit all over again. You know what I'm saying? I got kids, you know what I'm saying? I got the yeah. family. And we all trying to keep ourselves warm and shit. You know, even though we in the burbs or whatever, man, man it showed me nothing. Yeah. We still got affected by that shit too. But by that happening, you know, it was just like, fuck, I can't even stop working. Like, this shit's terrible. Like, even though we're fortunate enough to, you know, survive this type of shit now, but it was like a clear reminder, don't get comfortable. Like, yeah. that's what it was for me. I feel like that was a message. Like, damn. Like, right when I wanted to just chill out for a second, this right. shit happens and this just smacks you in the face. It's like when you're leaving L.A., nigga, and you're going to LAX and you see all these bums. Uh, yeah. That shit hits you in a way. Yeah. Whether you think of it or not, you, I mean, niggas like me that think, you know, that kind of got depth in what I'm thinking of or whatever, I just think, like, damn, what the hell happened? Yeah. Like, nigga, where did you stop at? Bro, that's... <laughs> You know what yeah, I'm saying? Homie, bro, like, I'll be thinking about shit like that, right? Like, I see like how, like, Skid Row is so fucked up. But you see all this, like, the the amount of homeless people in yeah, LA. Bro. You, you be wondering. Like, like, what happened in your life to get you to this point? You know what I'm saying? You know? And I, sometimes I just be, you know what I'm saying? Whenever I can, I swear to God, I do it all the time. Some people don't. But, you know, whenever I see panhandlers or whatever they call them, I look at it as people just, man, they, they um, you know, they in an unfortunate situation. I always try, if I got bread, I'll just stick them. You know, with bread, like, here, and I'll put it on a dude, I swear to God. This happened like two weeks ago. I'm going to North Park, and I pull off, you know, going wherever street I exit off on. I see a dude, he's like, he fresh out the pen. He got them blue denim jeans that you get, yeah. when you, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. The white tee, and bro, just, um, you know what I'm saying? I'm like, oh, I got some money out the bank, you know what I'm saying? So. Cause like I so said, I was going to the mall and shit. I just grabbed a few, you know what I'm saying? Do a little birthday shopping. And then bro started walking towards my way and I was just rolling my window down. And he was like, no, no, let me give you my resume. I was like, no, 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 bro. I ain't like that. I was like, yeah, take this money. And he was like, what? I was like, yeah, take that. You know what I'm saying? Just, you know, on some real shit. Just because it's like, you know, that shit makes me feel some kind of way. You know what I'm saying? Cause it's like, you know, you gotta pay your, you know, you gotta pay your deeds, and I feel like with you paying your deeds and shit, like good deeds, you know, your blessings come in return, because it's just like, you know what I'm saying, you put here for something, you know what I'm saying, so, I always, you know, picture myself like, damn, if I was fucked up like that, I hope they give me some money or something, like, you know what I'm saying, like, so I always put myself in, you know, other niggas' shoes because I was like, that was part of time. Not like that, but, you know, yeah. nigga, we, was on, we was in a fucked up situation, too, for a long period of time. You know, I wish a nigga like myself could come out and reach out to other niggas that's, you know, in fucked up situations and make music and shit. That's why I do this shit now, you know what I'm saying? Especially with, you know, other kids, kids and your dog, same shit. Like, bro, it's in a fucked up situation. I grab my of it. My boy Duke in Chicago, man, unfortunate. You know, we was about to get him going and um, he got killed, you know what I'm saying? It was like, and that shit kind of like hit me in like a different way where it was like, I told that nigga, I was like, man, we're gonna turn this shit up, you know, with the music. And then, like, I don't know, it kind of like resonates with you in mm-hmm. a way. But it's just like, damn, man, I could have changed that kid's life. He could have been something, you know. And then, you know, my boy Ralph, still to this day, you know what I'm saying? We was talking about it probably like last year. And then, um, we was just talking about where he'd be, you know, and what he'd think of the Chicago music scene and all that, you know, where it's going to. And we figured that he'd be, you know, one of them niggas, cause he he had the energy. And like I said, I just every time I find somebody, I just think fast and just be like, all right, hey bro, what's your situation? And they're like, oh, okay, cool, cool. I'm about to 
set you up with such and such, man. They're going to chop it up with you. You know, make sure you in plays with motions with whatever. You got a lawyer? All right, cool. Let me help you with a lawyer. Woo -woo. Let me get you assisted with this and that. Because niggas be like, man, there be niggas that hit me. everything. I don't hit them back or whatever on Instagram or Twitter. Niggas be like, nigga, I never hit me back. Woo -woo. Yeah. Like, bro, I fuck with your music. Like, whoa, 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 man. Hell yeah, I'll send you some shit. Like, that. I really fuck with niggas' music. Like, if I find somebody that's like nobody knows on but fuck earth, nigga, I'll be like, yeah, we found this kid named G from Louisiana. He didn't even believe it was me. This nigga, like, he about to start crying on the phone. I'm like, bro, he like, man, I can't believe it's you, bro. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, it's me in the face. Dude, what the fuck? Like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? I don't picture myself yeah. as like some fucking celebrity in the oh, world. No. How are niggas look at me? I don't picture myself as that. I picture myself as a nigga that really want to work with niggas. Like, I look at myself as like big bro and shit. You know what I'm saying? Or, you know what I'm saying? I don't want to say I'm an OG because I'm still learning. But, you know, as far as like big brother and showing niggas how to do this, do that, and keeping their mental capacity where it's supposed to be, you know, it's our job to do that. We don't even get that. I didn't get it when coming in this industry. Yeah. Nobody showed me the way or showed me the doors, nigga. I had to learn on my own with the team. If it was a robot, we all hit that robot, you know? And people make things ugly then, but it's really the beauty of it all because it's like you figured the way to go. Yeah. Off top. Nobody going to show you unless you find yourself with the shit. Straight up. Sure. Through canals, whatever, alleyways, whatever. You got to go over, off road to find your way. You can do it. Yeah. You don't necessarily need a map as long as you know where the fuck you going. You catch it later. Like these, like, okay. But yeah, like I said, man, it's just positive thinking, bro, positive mindsets, all that. And green juice. <laughs> Good water. <laughs> you know, pork. Yeah, no, I don't eat pork. All that shit, man, but we, you know what I'm saying? Like, we, we want to show people that.